Hello everybody, welcome back to SnowRunner Hard Mode, exciting episode for me, this is episode 1 of season 3, we are in Tamir, Russian Federation, on the Drowned Lands map, and yeah, this is our first proper foray into Tamir, we came here on a previous uh, special expedition to collect the Tager and in the process left this fuel trailer here on the map so one of the things we need to do might as well do fairly early on is pick that up and bring it back to the garage so that we've got a source of fuel near the garage until we open up the map enough to deliver that trailer to where it's meant to go so not done anything on this map basically we are in the garage with no trucks everything that we own is retained either in alaska or a couple of old trucks that we haven't used for a long time still retained in michigan and we're going to work out which trucks we're going to bring here which trucks we're going to sell i know i'm going to sell that one the royal bm17 I think I'll bring the crocodile first because I know that that's one I'm going to use here. A lot of the rest of these, I'm not entirely sure whether they'll come here or not. And I'm not going to rush into paying to deploy something until I know I need it. So I think the first truck we'll bring over is the crocodile. And since the last episode, uh, I just gave it a paint job while I was in the garage. I'm going to pay the three and a half thousand to deploy it from Alaska. And then we'll go in to the customizer and have a quick look. So I've changed the color scheme. I did. I kind of defaulted into a blue and white snowy icy looking theme for all of the trucks in Alaska. Not for any particular reason. The first couple of trucks just happened to have a good. I think the Tager has got a really good blue color scheme. And then I've just ended up following that. But in this map, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a bit more colourful, I think. Um, I don't have any engine upgrades on this. I do have off-road gearbox. I do have ray suspension. I have got the Tager tires, the 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 big mud tires on this. And at the moment, I have got a. Roof rack is carrying some extra fuel for me, and a, a low saddle, yeah, low saddle fitted. I have not really looked an awful lot into things like what trailers are available on this map, but yeah, what I'm going to do is the very, very first thing in Tamir. Oh, that's bright, isn't it? <laughs> that's a very very bright set of headlights is gonna go out oh that's weird that's way too bright that's horrible I don't know what that caught either uh, I might have to take some of the add-on headlights off this because that's on that's unpleasantly bright so we've got a task here we never picked it up when we were here for the Sega uh, may as well accept it because it'll show me where that oil tank needs to be delivered. And... Oh, maybe not. Or did I not track it? Right. Okay, so that needs delivering over on that side. Of the map. But for now, I am going to just run into where we pulled the Tega out. And grab that trailer and bring it back pretty much to the garage area so I've got a source of fuel here partly because I want to see how this truck behaves in these with these tires on this map And we're back in the mud. We're playing Snow Runner, but we're done with snow for a little bit again. 
I don't mind. I'm not too bad. I. It's good to have a bit of variety. I guess it'd be dull if it was all snow. It's a little bit weird that it's more mud than snow in the early game, but it's fine. If I end up driving this a lot, I'm definitely going to have to tone down these headlights because it's really hard to see. So which way is this trailer facing? It's facing downhill. I left this here when we got the Tega, thinking Future Outlay can sort this out. And Future Outlay is now here. So, it's pretty much full trailer. I do think I'll use this crocodile a lot, so I'll put it in the garage in a minute and get... I'll probably take off... Uh, I'll take off the roof bar headlights, I suppose. Those lights were quite dazzling in Alaska, and I thought it was a, it was the effect of the snow, but I think they've just got way too much intensity. As usual, we won't actually deliver this trailer until we've drained it down to about 10% fuel remaining, and then we'll deliver it get completion but use the fuel in the meantime fuel on this Tamiya map uh, as far as I can make out the cheapest is six dollars a litre and then I think in the rift it goes up as high as, as, high as eight dollars per litre so yeah pretty expensive to buy fuel here so we're going to try and avoid buying fuel as much as possible Get back in the garage. See if I can make these lights tolerable. Although it's nearly daylight anyway now, so I won't be able to tell so easily. Customize. off those large roof lights. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I know it's not dark enough to properly tell but that does look a bit better. Alright, I'll leave that there for a minute. And then the other thing, this is probably the thing I'm most excited about, is I'm going to buy a new truck. And it is going to be as recommended in comments I'm going to buy the 73210 now I've got 234,000 dollars without having spent any 
without having sold any trucks. I'm going to purchase it and deploy it here. So that's it done. That's 145,000 left. Now I have a slight concern with this vehicle. Um, and whether or not this is the only vehicle I buy, I'm not sure. But here's my concern. I'm not worried about the fact that I've got to explore to get the bigger engines. But I will want those engines. Uh, I can stick an advanced special gearbox in it because I've got one in stock. Suspension, I can't get the active suspension for quite a long time unless I do a pretty heavy duty exploration off into a mirror. A mirror, is that how you're supposed to say that? Anyway, that's how I'm going to say it. Um, the, the active suspension is quite a difficult thing to get, but it doesn't make any difference to tyre choices. I am immediately going to put the mud tyres on, because I'm assuming those are the ones I want for this map. Uh, I'll, I won't sell the all-terrains for now, just in case they're specially coded or anything, but for now, yeah, these MHS ones, which are the same tyres that you would get if you put chains on this. Uh, I will put the advanced heavy winch that I've got in stock in it. That came out of the Paystar. So, yeah, the Paystar doesn't need it anymore. I'm not going to buy the spare wheel for now. The, the thing I've got a slight concern about, and this is in comparison to the Paystar, is add-ons. So I can stick this loading crane on. I've got one in stock, the blue one, which is for Russian trucks, previously used on my Tager. But then this has got a sideboard bed option, which works with that crane. It's also got, so, so that's a two slot. And then it's also got the long sideboard bed. Uh, I thought that would happen. So the long sideboard bed, which the Paystar had, doesn't work with a loading crane. Whereas on the Paystar, you could have the long sideboard bed and the loading crane and tow a trailer. So this one, in comparison to the Paystar, this truck loses one cargo slot. Okay, fine. Live with it, I suppose. And in that case, I suppose there's no harm in putting the spare wheels on. Because they're not going to do any damage, are they? They don't affect the crane or the... So this this has basically become now a... Two slots, plus a crane, plus spare wheels. Truck. So that, so that yeah versus the Paystar, it loses one cargo slot if you want to self-load and obviously I do want to self-load in hard mode uh, and then quick look at what my choices are I probably will end up putting the big lights on it the LED lights yeah stick them on anyway rear fenders so the stock fenders I can remove them. So that's the ones that, that's the big fenders that go all the way over the back wheels. I'm going to leave those up because I don't think I'm not I'm not selling them. So I've always got the option to put them back in if I want to. But maneuverability, I think it's better. Um, and then looking at this, this is just front bars because the actual bumper built into the body doesn't seem to change. So I think I probably prefer that lattice as being. Oh, maybe that one, the heavy pipe. It's got two additional lights on it, whereas the lattice has got four. For now, I'm going to go with the lattice, because apart from, in, in for most trucks, more lights is good. It's only really so far that crocodile that's got weird extra lights. Uh, anything I care about here? Not beacons. 
I did wonder whether this one would have like roof mounted fuel tanks because I know some trucks of this style do, but no. Uh, exhaust. The stock exhaust is a small pipe at the side, big pipe at the top, or a big pipe pointing backwards. And I think probably the stock one better. Put the exhaust fumes out the side. I don't know how smoky this is. Rims. Yeah. Change it to the wheel nut type. And then colour. Ooh, shall I go for the DLC paint job? Is that some kind of lizard face? Yeah, why not? DLC paint job. Make it a bit bright. And then I don't really care about the decoration stuff. I've never used any of that. So that is my new truck. 350 litres range. And then the other thing that I'm pretty sure this truck can take, which will be quite important, is this. Yeah, it takes the crane and the sideboard bed off. But you can put the seismic vibrator module on, which is needed to do geology research to open up other maps so we've got a new truck and we've still got 130,000 left plus whatever we get for selling trucks that we decide to sell so that's pretty cool what else would I buy Don't know yet. So I want I want to explore and get the watchtowers as usual. Let's just see what tasks there are. So there's only one here, which is to deliver. Cement, uh, so so items to three different locations. So I've got to find out where to get that cement from and then deliver some down to the sawmill. And then while I'm down there, I would go and get this watchtower probably. Then I've got several opened up here. Hub recovery, that sounds important. Got to deliver a fuel carrier semi trailer, which looks like it is here. That'll be a low saddle job to this parking place. And then this is going to be one that I do want to do fairly soon, but I don't know whether I would open up the map first. Probably. Thirty deeds, oil barrels delivered to three different locations. It's four oil barrels, so I'll need a trailer. I need to find out where trailers are. Wooden planks. That's delivered here, presumably from the sawmill that it just asked me to take some cement down to. logging and more logging and this time I'm not going to accept these until I'm ready to do them pretty much because it's a bit irritating when it defaults to a task that you're not really interested in when you change maps so low saddle do I want to try moving that low saddle fuel trainer with the step Let's just have another look at add-ons. I can stick a low saddle on this. I think I fancy doing that because then I'll get a chance to drive my new truck. I'm not gonna, uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's just get out and have a chance to drive in the new truck. 
There she is. That's the that's the new beast. Uh, very, very nervous about that massively overhanging chin. It's quite funny the fact that, like as a, as a real truck, this would be quite weird because you're in front of the steering wheels. It's got quite a good turning circle because that rear axle steers as well. So I imagine it's got a pretty good turning circle for a big truck. Right. Uh, let's go and find this fuel carrier trailer which looked like it was in so I, caught, I drove over something that damaged the crocodile coming out of there I won't actually deliver the, the trailer fuel carrier trailer because I'll want to drain the fuel out of it if it's one that's got fuel in it. Brand new map. It's exciting. Yeah, so that's the trailer. That's a contest ahead. It's the logging station. Is that trailer full? Yes, it is. And it would need to be delivered to. See, the thing is, I do want to get that hub up and running, don't I? Right, okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this trailer out and just kind of open up some of the map and move the trailer. I don't know whether that's a broken bridge, it doesn't look like it, but move the trailer in the direction of where I think it needs to be delivered. But I'll park it without actually delivering it and then I'll have a fuel carrier in that area because I've got another one near the garage here with nearly nearly full with 2,000 litres. So it'll be useful to get a trailer roughly in that, that part of the map so that I've got a forward operation fuel supply. Um, Apart from coming here to get the Tega, I've done nothing in Tamir on my campaigns mode or obviously hard mode. You, well, you guys have seen as much hard mode as I've done. This truck feels good, drives nice. Um, so this is all new to me. I haven't, I've never done this content. I am working this out as I go along and a little bit too excited to get here to have sat down and worked out a game plan before starting the episode so I'm afraid I'm winging it as I go so nice to have always on dip lock So we're just going to take this in the general direction. Um, bit of a gamble. Bear with me. What I am going to do is I'm going to put as much as I can from this big trailer into that smaller one 
just to, to split the balance of how much fuel I've got in each location. So I've got now a full 2000 here near the garage and I'll take this one slightly depleted and park it somewhere near its delivery point. And that, that opens a map for me at the same time as um, starting to get stuff done. I could do with a um, semi, a low saddle trailer to put on the back of this as of. Because if it's fuel efficient and useful to use as my main go to truck, then uh, I'd semi-trailer could be quite a handy thing to just drag around five slots of cargo self-loading with a crane all right so there's a fair bit of tarmac road here so far not too bad Feels good. Let's get in the cab, see what it feels like in the cab. Okay, so this road is up and running. It's quite a throaty engine, isn't it? I know it's not the big one yet, but good engine noise. sleeper cab just to taunt my driver because it's hard mode so he can't sleep no time traveling to get rid of day of night time if you don't like it just gotta suck it up all right let's have a look at the map where am i going now so i think i'm gonna stick to this route, this road around the side here. Hey, okay, so that's pretty much taking me to the place I need to be. Somewhere like this. Oh, I like this truck already. So I assume that this is the entry to whatever it is they've got to deliver this to. Some kind of service hub. I assume that means repairs, maybe fuel, would make sense, bring some fuel in and then they can supply fuel to me. Uh, again, I don't want to... accept the task until I'm ready to hand it in. It's a bit of a strange entrance though, isn't it? Let's get back outside so we can have a piece of It's quite smoky, isn't it? I'll drive it from this side, I think. I haven't tried this truck out either because you need to be level 20 to be able to buy it. 
and I'm on campaign mode. I'm only level 16. So this is the first time that I've had a chance to try this truck out. Yeah, that's the sort of stuff I'm worried about. The nose is now stuck on that. Without active suspension, how am I supposed to get in there? Because that wasn't a very big lit, and I know I got over it, but I can imagine other places with a car where that wouldn't have worked. I've got to be a bit careful, I don't accidentally deliver it because I haven't marked where the delivery spot is on my map. Over there. Oh, there's a right, sideboard semi trainer, perfect. Empty as well. Right, so. So the delivery point is going to be on my right. I'm just going to move this to this side. Park it there. Ready to be used. Refuel. And then I'm going to grab that sideboard trailer. Or at least have a look at the map and decide what I might do. But that trader could be my default buddy for this truck. Maybe more so than the two slot sideboard. I haven't found any other trailers anyway, so at the moment this is my best cargo option. Engine off. Alright. I'm going to head back, I'm going to retrace my steps that I've just taken and come back and get some cement. That's not too bad. Yeah, five slots. So basically, I've just worked that in my head. Go back, get two cement and three oil and then we can follow that cycle around um, and be fairly efficient in what we're delivering. So, five slots of cargo available. Let's get ourselves back up to the railway station. And I think that chin thing is going to be a case of bumping it over stuff rather than driving slowly into it. Uh, I gather from comments from Friday that this chin used to dig in everywhere and they recoded it to kind of slide over stuff rather than digging in. So hopefully not quite as bad now as it used to be. I need to pull that fuel trailer a bit closer to the main drag so that I don't have to do detours to do drive-by fueling. I think I might take, when I leave here, I might take the crocodile with me on a tow rope. Because then, in the direction that I'm going, there's a watchtower down there. And I can use a smaller truck to go up and get the watchtower. with that kind of obstacle thing in the way but I 
attach. Cool. I like that truck. Right, so I want two pallets of cement on a loading platform. It's on, that's a decent, so far, not, not too glary, that's a decent illumination. First impressions, new favourite truck. So the advanced special gearbox, I'm not really sure of what its characteristics are. High range plus it's got low, high, and low, low, high, low, medium, low, low. I don't know what its main advantages are. Right, leave that there a sec. I'm going to real quick jump into the crocodile. could do with a two slot trailer for this because if I'm towing this around behind me it'd be handy if it had its own little trailer it could have pulled another couple of um, barrels of oil along because I think I'll need them at some point what I'm going to do with this I'm just going to pull that trailer a bit closer to the road and then I'm going to Prepare, put this in a position where I can hook a rope onto it and take it with me.
got to look at the route a sec because I'm not entirely sure. The one I'm going to be doing first is this cycle. So I've got to come down probably this route, which I've obviously not done before. But I expect that's the route that I want to take, or is it this? much of a muchness really. Yeah, maybe past where we got the Tager. I just don't like the look of those twisty bits so much. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to this route and see what see how I do. All exploration at the moment. Down here somewhere, and that's relatively close to this watchtower. So I'll take the croc with us. Some kind of a Russian scout clamped onto the top of those pallets of cement would do the job, wouldn't it? If I had such a vehicle. Uh, fuel out of the fuel carrier trailer into the Azov. Not going to bother firing up the engine on the crocodile at the moment. We'll just see how it copes towing it without assistance because this is a pretty big truck in comparison. Turn off. I'm going to be checking the map quite a lot, guys, uh, as I get used to this region. I think I'm going to go this way. It's pretty capable. I know it's dark and we, I can't really see as much as I would like to. And I, I don't know the other route, so therefore I can't really compare. But this does feel like a pretty unpleasant route. And, and so far, so good. It's coping with it okay. It's got quite a lot of cargo on. It's dragging a semi-trailer. I think the chin bottomed out there, but released itself fairly easily. And it's also dragging a crocodile with no engine running. So yeah, all in all, pretty good. Pretty impressive.
so I'm really excited to be here uh, I'm not gonna do an awful lot of political commentary on my gaming channel because I don't think it's the right place to do it uh, the only thing I'm gonna say might you know, the, the situation in the world at the time of recording this is pretty dire and it, it's it's pretty upsetting but this is probably the nearest I'll ever get to Russia for various reasons in the world and that's that's a real shame but nothing compared to what some poor people have to go through and that's all I'm going to say on the subject, I think. Right, so. Here we are. Cargo delivery to cement. One, two. And then cargo, I want wooden planks on the loading platform. One, and I'll put two on here. I honestly don't think this Russian crane is as powerful as the yellow one that on the American trucks. But anyway, it's packed. Engine on. So, those two wooden planks need to be delivered to the factory and the factory also needs to receive two of the oil barrels and we drop one oil barrel off at this village on the way past so that's that plan and then what i'm going to do right now i'm just looking at the length of the episode unfortunately i've got to be a bit, i've got to be pretty careful here because i'm not going to be able to time lapse or cut very much early doors on a map it's a mistake I made in Alaska as well but I'm gonna come in and see what this truck is and I'm also gonna try and get the watchtower I don't know I know there are trucks that you get to keep with all the mud where I've dragged this thing on its side. Um, there, are, there are trucks that you get to keep not too far from here. Let's not tip it over without the ability to rescue myself because this doesn't have an autonomous winch because it isn't a scout. Which is the downside of using it as a scout. Let's try and be careful not to tip it over. Um... Yeah, so I've got to be. I've got to watch the episode length. It's going to be quite difficult to edit down if I go too far. Ah, swampy stuff. How I've missed you. So what's that truck then? Don't recognise that. Is that one I get to keep? Some kind of a scout? Aquatic. Nope, it's broken. I won't budge. I think I would have more chance pulling the mythical sword from the mythical stone. But first we need to repair this vehicle. Could you help us? Um, yeah, all right then. Start tracking it and 
it looks like it needs a repair as well but let's have a look at what the actual task says yeah so it needs a, it's a don 71 and it needs repairing and some fuel i haven't got a repair truck here have i I haven't got anything. I haven't found a repair supply station either. But apart from... There is a repair module that you could put on this crocodile, but I haven't got a resupply zone to be able to stock it, even if I fitted it. So for now, I think what I'll do is... Maybe just drag it out onto the road and leave it where it's easier to come back and get it later. Until I'm... Because I don't know where it's going to be delivered. And it's not going to tell me where it's going to be delivered until after I've repaired it, I suppose. Alright, that'll do for that. Slightly, regret, slightly regretting going in to try and get that. Where is this watchtower? Quite a way off. Yeah, I am going to leave that there. Because I can't make this work any... If I record anymore, I'll be stuck. So... I'm going to wrap the episode there. That's long enough for the first episode of Tamir. Really pleased to be here. Really pleased to um, be starting a new episode, new map, new challenges, new trucks. All exciting stuff for me. Really pleased to be here. I hope you you enjoyed this first episode of Season 3. Uh, I hope to see you in the next one. But in the meantime, thank you very much and goodbye.